Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Valerie Harwood, Chairwoman of the Delaware Commission of Veterans Affairs. On behalf of the Delaware Commission of Veterans Affairs, Delaware River and Bay Authority, and the Office of Veterans Services, welcome to today's ceremony. The war memorial that stands before us contains the names of 15,000 Delaware and New Jersey service members who gave their lives during World War II and the Korean War. But let us also remember all service members from every branch who gave all for their great country, the United States of America. And let us not forget those who returned home but continue to suffer in silence. I'm sure everyone in the audience today can think of one veteran they know who keeps to themselves, is isolated, or doesn't like to talk about their experiences. Or maybe it's you. Just know resources are available to all veterans and let's take care of one another. At this time, we ask that you observe a moment of silence for those names inscribed on the memorial and for all who have lost their lives while serving. Thank you. Please rise for the presentation of colors by the Delaware National Guard Joint Honor Guard and our national anthem sung by Army Sergeant First Class Mary Kate Hall. Present the colors. dawn's early light, what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, o'er the ramparts we watched, were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled Banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you. 
Please remain standing. I now ask for Chaplain Andrew Werner to come forward to deliver our invocation. Let us pray. Almighty God, you give us life and breath. We are here to honor those who have served our nation and gave their last full measure. They never made it home to family and friends. Their absence creates a void. Be with their families especially as they live with it more acutely. Give them comfort and strength. Generation after generation, the fallen have preserved their liberty. May we never forget that liberty is never free, but it is of great cost. We honor their service today. Almighty, meet us here. You're the author of life and freedom. Be with us as we remember our fallen. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. Please be seated. At, good morning, sir. How are you? At this time, we would like to recognize our distinguished guests in the audience. The Honorable John C. Carney, Governor of Delaware. The Honorable Bethany Hall Long, Lieutenant Governor of Delaware. The Honorable Tom Carper, U.S. Senator. <laughs> Representing the office of Senator Coons, Cleopatra Jones. <laughs> Representing the office of U.S. Representative Lisa Blunt Rochester, Krista Weed. <laughs> the Honorable Kathy Jennings, Delaware Attorney General. The Honorable Trinidad Navarro, Delaware Insurance Commissioner. The Honorable Lydia York, Delaware Auditor of Accounts. The Adjutant General, Major General Michael Berry. State Representatives and Chair of the House Veterans. Affairs Committee, Namdi Chakwocha. Veterans Affairs Committee, Nicole Poor, who unfortunately could not make it here today. <laughs> Newcastle County Executive, Matt Meyer. <laughs> Members of the Delaware General Assembly. <laughs> Tom Cook, Executive Director, Delaware River and Bay Authority. Miranda Mal, Acting Director, Delaware Office of Veterans Services. <laughs> Vamsi Poluri, Executive Director, Wilmington VA Medical Center. <laughs> Nolan Lewis, Vice Chair, Delaware Commission of Veterans Affairs. <laughs> and of course, the rest of our Delaware Commission of Veterans Affairs, right up front. The Commissioners of the Delaware River and Bay Authority. <laughs> Members of the Delaware National Guard. <laughs> Members of Dover Air Force Base. <laughs> and of course, our most important family members, our gold star family members sitting right up front. <laughs> Unfortunately, time does not permit us to acknowledge all distinguished guests, so we extend thanks to local officials, service members, veteran service organizations, family members, and all veterans in attendance. It is now time for our Memorial Day messages. Please welcome the Governor, John Carney.
Thank you, Madam Chair, <clears throat> and good morning. I have uh, some prepared remarks. I've been coming to this ceremony since my days as a junior staffer for then Senator Joe Biden, who as president I know was out here this morning to pay tribute to all those who made the ultimate sacrifice and to remember his son, Bo, who passed uh, on this day several years ago. And in my prepared remarks, I said, because I can expect every year that I come here, everything is going to be set just exactly right. And then I come in, and instead of sitting right there, <laughs> which is where I usually sit, with the elected officials over here sitting right there, and the Veterans Commission sitting over here, and the Gold Star Mother sitting on this side in the front row, and her elected officials sitting kind of just right back there. I'm really confused. <laughs> and I had to strike all my first couple of paragraphs that you know just can count on everything. One thing you count on is that General Vavil is gonna be here with Ray Fermani, 102 years old, World War II hero. <clears throat> And Brigadier General Retired Terry Wiley is always there, and he's in his right seat, <laughs> where he always sits. <clears throat> but seriously, I do want to thank all those who made this event possible. Secretary Bullock and his team, uh, Tom Cook and his team at the DRBA. It, gets, it really does get better every year. And now we have tents, and when it's really cold and raining, we have side uh, tense, and it's just uh, a wonderful way to pay tribute to those that we owe so much to. It's always important to me, though, that at this ceremony we take a few minutes to reflect on the true meaning of this, of this day, remembering specifically those who sacrificed their lives and the family and friends they left behind. And as I look around, I see the Gold Store mothers on the other side, but still here and we pay you tremendous amount of respect. This ceremony today is mostly about, is about you and the family and friends of those who, who gave, made the ultimate sacrifice for, for all of us. Soldiers like, soldiers like Larry Fletcher Potts of Smyrna, who was just 25 years old when he was declared missing in action on his birthday. Marine Lieutenant Potts graduated in 1969 from Delaware State College. And at graduation, he was one of two men dressed in his Marine Corps white uniforms, standing out in a, cap of, in a crowd of cap and gowns. His classmates, quote, marveled at his courage and commitment to serve his country. Lieutenant Potts was attempting to rescue a downed Air Force pilot when his plane was hit with hostile fire. Captain Potts has a military marker in his memory at the Odd Fellows African American Cemetery in Smyrna. We all have stories of family members and friends who made that ultimate sacrifice. And today we need to tell those stories and retell those stories as we gather here, not just on a Memorial Day, but every day. The purpose of this day is to keep these heroes and all the Delawareans who made that ultimate sacrifice in our memory. Unfortunately, the list goes on and on for every war and every conflict. And I know each of you have your own list. More recently, remember patriots like 26-year-old Corporal Stephen McGowan, a fellow St. Mark's graduate who died in Ramadi, Iraq, while on patrol in 2005. And senior airman Elizabeth Lonke, a graduate of Padua Academy, killed in Iraq in 2007, but not before she disarmed more than 20 explosive devices during her deployment. She wrote, <laughs> and we're gonna hear later from our guest speaker, about women and their role in the military through the years. And Army Warrant Officer Sean Mullen, a Dover native who died in Afghanistan, 
I join Officer Mullen's family at Dover Air Force Base for the dignified transfer to his home state. And it's a day I will never forget. Today we remember all those who sacrificed all. The ones that are personal to each of us and all the names on the monument behind us and the monuments across our country and across our state. And I can tell you this from my years as an elected official, the Delawareans are committed to remembering and honoring our neighbors whose lives were cut short. You could see it in the flags flying on front porches across our state and in monuments like the one in Wilmington, which is just a few blocks from my house, for in memory of those New Newcastle Countyans who made the ultimate sacrifice in Vietnam. If you haven't been there, go there after the sun sets and it's all lit up against the dark sky and read the names and remember those names. Not only do we remember the dead today, but we also use this occasion to celebrate and show our appreciation for the living, the men and women serving in military today and our veterans with your hats on in the, in the audience here who served. I'm honored as your governor to serve as commander in chief of the Delaware National Guards. And it's been a busy and difficult seven and a half years for our guard. One deployment after another to places all around the world and incredible service during the COVID pandemic. I will never be able to thank these men and women enough, but I wanna take this opportunity again to thank General Berry and his troop today for all that they did and do for our state. Please help me <laughs> welcome them. To all our veterans who are here, who serve proudly and are here with us today, thank you again for your service. Thank you very much and God bless you each and every one. Thank you, Governor. Please welcome the Lieutenant Governor, Bethany Hall Long. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning to uh, the incredible community of our veterans. Thank you for your presence. Thank you to the DRBA team and to Secretary Bullock and our Veterans Commission. I know many of us were gathered, it was a little warmer on Saturday when we gathered at the Bear Cemetery. And today, Governor, I wanna thank you and all the honored guests in the Disney English panel, our General Assembly, who've gathered here today you addressed the change in format. We did have a little movement of seating. But the one constant that remains important to me as being a daughter of a military family dating back to the Revolutionary War is the constant from Decoration Day that started in 1868. When we pull in, we see the half-mast flags that remain at half-mast on May 30th till noon. And those of us raised in faith families and community know at three o'clock, what do we do today? We pray and we say a deep, sincere appreciation to those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. And as I look to families here, our Gold Star families, our Gold Star mothers, every day, every day is your Memorial Day. You have those empty seats. You have those lost experiences. But we gather, as our governor indicated, to celebrate as well their lives of honor to say thank you. And I just want to say a couple stories. Where I'm so excited to be here with my fellow nurse, Phyllis Wilson, who came with the National Military Women's Memorial, who, with whom I've had an opportunity to work with this memorial for since its inception several decades back, and honor her with service. And our own women that are here who are champions, we're going to hear today about the future and plans that they have and Miranda and other has for us not only for women and men, but to lead into the future for our service here in the state. So just a couple quick stories. Um, I know that many of you heard me give many stories on Saturday, but the theme this year nationally is about stories. 
and stories matter. My father, an Army infantry medic and guardsman for three decades, told me lots of stories of his experience, but today we honor families. I could talk about each of the Gold Star families. Your stories, your loved ones are impressive. Keith Campbell's story, because of my father was an Army infantry medic, Keith Judy Campbell's brother, yes, has a library named after him in Texas, but his service was because he gave selfishly. He was an Army infantry medic who went in, rescued others. February 8th, 1967, in the Congo. That's who we honor today with the others. Also, we're gonna hear in a moment from our keynote speaker. You know, my husband and I, military Navy veteran, we spent a lot of time at the Fort Myers Cemetery. Here in Delaware, as our governor indicates, at our Air Force Base, the dignified transfers. Senator Carper will tell you, I know as a Navy captain, pilot, veteran, those are angel flights. And those stories with, with my mentor, the first black female general in America who headed the Army Nurse Corps, talked about why it matters. And her dear friend, best friend, Lieutenant Colonel Graham, is one of eight women on that memorial, one of the nurses who went into World War II, who went into Korea and volunteered on that Vietnam conflict, never came home. So kind of being somber for a moment, but it's serious. And so today when we pray, when we remember and we have flags and we're in our communities every day, we say thank you. And we're gonna end on a positive. <laughs> With Mr. Ray and my good friend General Vavila and many of you here, You've been leaning in, working with the governor's challenge on behavioral health. As our governor indicated, we say thank you. Members of the General Assembly, we want you to know we have services for families, for those who may need it. So please work with us at the VA hospital. We have a team, and we have a team through General Vavila and my office helping those who need help, whether physical or emotional. So again, Thank you for being present. Know that your loved ones are always remembered and their service was why we are free and here today. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. I'm up next we have, and please welcome, U.S. Senator Tom Carper. Let's give Valerie a nice hand. She's got the toughest job of all. Gold Star Mothers, Navy salute you. My uh, grandmother was a Gold Star Mother. My mom, uh, some recall the story, my, uh, my mom uh, had a couple of brothers. Uh, one was a Chief Petty Officer in the Navy in World War II. And another uh, made it as far as uh, third class Petty Officer. On, at the age of 19, he was on his uh, ship out in the Pacific Ocean, and uh, the uh, ship came under attack by kamikaze aircraft. They tried to launch the aircraft to take on the kamikaze aircraft. And uh, my uncle and a number of other uh, sailors were on the deck trying to get the airplanes off, off and up into the air, and uh, uh, a number of the sailors uh, were killed. But their bodies were never recovered, including my, my, uh, my uncle, uh, Bob. My mother, uh, my mother, uh, once showed me when I was a little boy, and we went back to West Virginia where my sister and I were born. We, and there were in the dining room of, the, of their house was a, um, a photograph, a black and white photograph, pretty good sized photograph, of a, a young uh, third class petty officer who uh, was my uncle, my uncle Bob, who never made it uh, back. My mother, my sister and I, we born in West Virginia, we grew up in Virginia. We go back in summers, you, maybe you went back to stay with your uh, grandparents during summers or whatever, where we go back and stay with gra uh, our grandparents. And my, uh, my grandfather had a, a nickname for me, always called me Joe. And uh, my, my grandmother called me Bobby after her son. And uh, I, we'd leave there to go back to Virginia where we grew up. I didn't know who I was. <laughs> but I knew, I knew whoever this guy Joe was, he had to be special. I never got to write the true story out of my grandfather about that one. But uh, I knew that Bobby, my, uh, his, his mom, uh, loved him and, and missed him uh, for, forever. The, um, there's a huge, uh, when you come in, any of you, any of you been to uh, our office and my office in the United States Senate in Washington? Some of you have been there. And uh, 
in my personal office, there's a huge picture blown up of, of Bob, uh, Bob Patton and his uh, Navy Blues, 19 years old, looking like a million bucks. And um, one of my proudest uh, possessions. It was inspiration to, uh, to, to, to me. My dad and those who came home, my uncles who, who came home alive at the end of World War II came home to a hero's welcome. Hero's welcome. It was just jubilation, as some of you may, uh, may recall. Those are, we have any Vietnam veterans here? We have Vietnam veterans, stand up, take a bow, let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Believe it or not, today uh, Vietnam is our number nine trading partner in the world. Believe it or not, today Vietnam is a bulwark against Chinese expansion in that part of the world. Uh, the uh, the uh, Vietnamese people, we've just entered into a new defense agreement with, uh, with the folks in, in Vietnam. Pretty amazing what, is, what has happened in the turnaround there. But when we came back uh, from that part of the world, the war was over, we didn't get much, we didn't get the kind of welcome that my dad and my uncles and all received at the end of World War II. In fact, it was quite, uh, in some cases, hostile, in other cases, just, just uh, cold. But um, my, uh, I came back here, I moved to Delaware, got an MBA, and the first week I was in graduate school, I got in my uh, Volkswagen Carmen Gear with a rebuilt engine and drove out to the VA hospital and found it out on Kirkwood Highway and uh, went there and I was well eligible for some dental benefits and the young dentist who took care of me was a guy named Jerry K. Otter, who ended up being my dentist for 40 years but he was my dentist there at the, the VA hospital after he, I got my uh, dental work done. He said, uh, Tom, he said, I would not get my health care from this hospital. I would not use the VA for, for my, for my health care. And uh, he said, you could do better than that. Morale's bad, the quality of service is not good. I said, really? And he said, really? I want to tell you, I spent the last 40 years trying to change that. And we've had a lot of people help change. The VA hosp hospital, the VA system is as good as any on the planet. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Not only is the hospital in, uh, on Ellesmere, on uh, Route 2 is not only is it a, a gold standard for healthcare delivery, but we have uh, a CBOC, a community-based outpatient clinic in Dover. We have another in Georgetown. We have a, uh, in, uh, just, a, uh, just outside of Milford, we have a uh, veteran's home of about 150 beds. They just added a dental uh, wing there. The, uh, the folks who, uh, who get the GI Bill today, if they don't use it, the GI doesn't use the GI Bill, their spouse can use it. If the spouse doesn't use it, their children can use it. I mean, the world has changed. Let's uh, put our hands together. I mean, let, it is a new world, and frankly, we've made it and made it better for our veterans and their families. Last thing I want to say is, um, I like to say inadversity li uh, lies opportunity. That's Albert Einstein. But uh, inadversity lies uh, Albert Einstein. And uh, the, uh, we've got, we're going through a tough time as a nation right now. You know that, I know that. We've been through worse. Sometimes I run into people, I ride, go back and forth in a train almost every day we're in session. People talk to me, and some people, we're, it's never been this bad, it's never been this bad. Well, it has. And if you go back far enough, we had a civil war where brothers against brothers, families against families, uh, 600,000 men killed. I mean, it's, it's, that was worse, a whole lot worse. We were in not one world war, two world wars, the Great Depression. And uh, we've been through all that. We came through it as the mightiest nation on earth, the most successful nation on earth, strongest economy on earth. And we'll get through this as well. We'll get through this as well. One of the keys, one of the keys in getting us from here to there is, uh, frankly, our Constitution. Our Constitution, we have the most copied Constitution in the, in the, in the, on the planet. More countries have taken our Constitution, sort of like ch changed the names and stuck their names in there and adopted our Constitution. And it's been, uh, we've been through heaven and hell with it, but it's, it's the really the linchpin that holds us together. Written up in uh, Philadelphia, just up the road, about 30 miles up the road, and ratified, remember where they first ratified? In the state of Delaware. Delaware, just down the road, about 40 or 50 miles. Made us the first state, there you go, and, uh, and it's something we can be enormously proud of. I, um, how many of you have taken an oath to defend the country and constitution in your life? All right. I, I don't know if you, I'm gonna ask those of you who are able to stand, to stand. There, you just wrote, raise your hand. I want you to stand. Those of you who just raise your hand. I was 17, 
years old, when I first raised my hand to uh, defend the country and constitution. I've already done it many times since, and so have you. This is, uh, I carry this with me wherever I go. It's the Constitution, including the uh, preamble of the Constitution. Let's read it, let's repeat it, okay? Let's do it. Are you ready? Yes. Come on, are you ready? Yes. All right, here we go. We the people. We the people. For the United States. The United States. In order to form, order to form a, more a more perfect union. Establish justice. Establish justice. Ensure domestic tranquility. Provide for the common defense. Promote the general welfare. And secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. To ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America forever and ever. Amen. I just added that last part. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Senator Carper. It is an honor for me to introduce our keynote speaker, Chief Warrant Officer 5, Phyllis J. Wilson. She served 37 years in the Army as a military intelligence voice intercept operator, operator, excuse me. She has served around the globe, visiting more than 35 countries in Europe, Asia, South America, Africa, and North America. She has been mobilized numerous times to shoulder the duties of defense of the nation and has deployed to Iraq several times as an intelligence analyst with special operations. Chief Warrant Officer 5 Wilson, the floor is yours. Well, hello everyone, and I am so glad that this is all about telling stories because that's exactly what I want to do. But first, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, Senator, and all of, you guys are all rock stars. I'm so excited to be here. I drove up last night from Washington, D.C., and uh, it's really an honor to talk to you today. And did you order the beautiful weather? Yeah. Somebody, this is fantastic. This is just about perfect. <laughs> So thank you all for allowing me to join you for this Memorial Day ceremony. On Monday, I was at the White House for breakfast and President Biden spoke. And it's always an honor to get, as in my role as the president of the Military Women's Memorial, to get those kind of invitations. And this poor kid that grew up dirt poor to one day just expect to receive an invitation to the White House on Memorial Day and Veteran Day is like, pinch me. How did this happen? But I gladly get up bright and early and get to the White House to eat off those beautiful plates, the lovely china that I have not yet availed myself of taking one home in my big handbag, but I want to. I have a huge handbag. I have a big one. I'm just afraid they'd tackle me on the way out, and that's really not... I'd never get an invite again, so I'll behave. It is imperative, though, on days like today that we remember all of those that had the willingness to serve and, if required, to lay down their lives for this country. So Memorial Day holds a very special place in my heart and I'm sure in yours. Over the past weekend, Americans by the hundreds of thousands visited Arlington National Cemetery where I work but also many cemeteries across the nation and even around the world. They visited family members from earlier generations. They visited, like me, their fallen comrades, and some visited the graves of their sons or daughter. The Military Women's Memorial stands proudly. It is a beautiful edifice at the entrance to Arlington National Cemetery and it serves to educate the country on the service and courage of America's military women, past and present. As we remember the military men and women who are no longer with us, I'd like to share a few amazing stories with you today, taken from our national database at the memorial, where we have more than 314,000 women's stories in our archives. So I am a registered nurse, as we were talking about, so I imagine my surprise 
when I found in our national database another nurse that shares my name, Phyllis Wilson. I was Googling for Delaware women, and up came Phyllis Wilson. She's from Newark, Delaware, and she served during World War II. She was aboard the ship, the Queen Elizabeth, bringing patients home from Europe during World War II. And after the war, she served at Walter Reed Hospital. She died in August of 2002 at the age of 79, and she is laid to rest at Grace Lawn Memorial Park in Newcastle, Delaware. How does that happen? So I'm gonna go find her and I'm gonna lay down on the grass where her marker is and I'm gonna do a selfie with her later today. I have to see her. Another World War II nurse, First Lieutenant Mary Seltz from Dover, Delaware, shared her memorable experience of serving at the 47th Field Hospital in our database. She shared that she was briefly captured by the Nazis during the Battle of the Bulge at the age of 25. She died in September 2008 at the age of 87, and she is laid to rest at Arlington National Cemetery. So I did go and find her already. More recently, women have been afforded the opportunity to join men on the battlefields at numbers never seen in our history. This, of course, means that women will also die in the line of duty at historical levels. 179 women have died in combat zones since 9-11. One of those is my dear friend, another Chief Warrant Officer 5, Sharon Swartworth. Sharon was the Command Chief Warrant Officer in the United States Army JAG Corps. All the lawyers, all the judge advocates. She was getting ready to retire. Her husband, a Navy captain and a physician, had already taken their seven-year-old son to his next assignment in Hawaii. She went to Iraq to visit all of her soldiers before she retired, and sadly, her helicopter with the Command Sergeant Major and the Command Chief Warrant Officer of the JAG Corps was shot down by enemy fire, and she died. She never went to Hawaii with her family. So I remember Sharon, she died in November of 2003. As we spoke about earlier, Airman Elizabeth Lonke was just 23 years old when she gave her life, and she is laid to rest at the Delaware Veterans Memorial Cemetery. She was killed by an explosive device. A, a car appeared in front of a compound gate, and the explosive team of which she was serving with was sent to check it out. And as they approached the vehicle, the bomb was remotely detonated. And earlier this year, three American soldiers died in Jordan one of the few times it was more women than men that were killed. In January 28th of this year, a one-way unmanned aerial system, a drone, impacted the container housing units near a Syrian border where two of these that were killed were Army women. Posthumously promoted to Sergeant, Sergeant Brianna Moffat, age 23, and Sergeant Kennedy Sanders, age 24, also killed was Army Sergeant William Rivers, age 46, of Willingboro, New Jersey. These men and women served this nation with courage, courage, character, and commitment. And this is why it's important that we stop, we pause, we breathe, and we take the time to remember them. I wanted you to know that I thought about, as I thought about this day and coming here to talk to you, some provocative words inscribed for all the ages on the walls of the Korean War Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C. came to mind. And they read, Our nation honors her sons and daughters who answered the call to defend a country they never knew and to defend a people they never met. That's selfless service. So on this Memorial Day and every day, Remember, we owe our service members a tremendous debt of gratitude for protecting our freedoms so we can enjoy moments like this. And their service to country didn't stop simply because they hung up the military uniform for the last time. They knew their mission was far from over. Sharing untold talent, skill, and experience, veterans continue to serve their communities, supporting charities and volunteer activities, and serving 
at every level of government because that's what they know how to do is to serve. We owe them a great debt of gratitude as well. In 2021, America lost an extraordinary patriot, a veteran, a lifelong servant to the nation, General Colin Powell, who had visited the memorial many times. And just earlier that year, during COVID, the Memorial Day concert, which is aired the night before Memorial Day, because of all of the issues in Washington, D.C., they filmed General Colin Powell and other speeches in front of the Military Women's Memorial at Arlington. So I had a chance to talk with him, and then, of course, in 2021, he passed away. He's laid to rest at Arlington National Cemetery with a grave marker that looks like every other soldier's grave marker, which is as he would have it. At his memorial service, his son Michael, in eulogizing his father, said, he was a great lion with a big heart. And he went on to speak about holding his father's hand in their last minutes together. Michael spoke about reflecting on the many things that hand had done during that extraordinary life of service, from squeezing his hand when he was a child, to signing report cards that might have been doctored, <laughs> and fixing cars, to saluting soldiers, signing treaties, and signing war orders. General Colin Powell, the consummate veteran, lived a life of service. So today, I do get choked up, but I'm sorry or any day that you shake a veteran's hand, I hope you will pause to reflect on the words of Michael Powell and think about the countless acts of service that hand you hold has done for you and for this great nation, and yes, for people they never met. I have brought a box which has 100 yellow ribbons. I don't want them to fly away. <laughs> which carry the name of a military woman that is no longer living. They are in our national database. I would love to share one with any and all of you, I invite you to learn more about her by scanning the QR code. You will find her story like a big baseball card, her photo, her memorable experiences, where she served, when she served, and her awards and decorations. Bring her back to life, say her name, don't let her be lost forever. We do have more than 314,000 stories, but there are over 3 million women that have served this country. That means we have 10% of the stories, and I've tagged a few people already to make sure they add their own story into the national database. But if you know a military woman, past or present, living or deceased, we stand ready to help you add her story into the national registry, so her story is forever remembered, and I can tell you about her like I did about this other Phyllis Wilson or, Ann, uh, or uh, Airman Lonke. There are so many stories. So to my fellow veterans, I salute all of you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your continuing service to your nation. May we never forget what Memorial Day truly means. God bless this great nation, and thank you all. Thank you, Chief Warrant Officer Five Wilson. We thank you for your service and being here today to honor our fallen brothers and sisters. Thank you. I'm gonna turn it over to our vice chair, Nolan, if you don't know him, the most contagious laugh you'll ever hear. If you get to know him, you'll learn that soon. <coughs> Nolan. <laughs> oh my, thank you, thank you. Um, it's time for the floor tribute. As I read your organization's name, Please stand, if able, and salute to honor our veterans. As a reminder, these statues are rendered from your place in the audience. To my left is the reef, and for the audience is to the right. So as I read your name, stand up and point to the left. Gold Star Families, Delaware Chapter.
Gold Star Mothers of America Incorporated. The Honorable John Carney, Governor, State of Delaware. The Honorable Bethany Hall Long, Lieutenant Governor. The Honorable Tom Carper, U.S. Senator. Jeff Bullard, Secretary of State. The Honorable Catherine Jennings, Attorney General. The Honorable Trinidad Navarre, Insurance Commissioner. Delaware General Assembly. Delaware Commission of Veteran Affairs. Air Force Sergeants Association. American XPOWs, Delaware Chapter Number One Incorporated. American Legion and Auxiliary Department of Delaware. American Legion and Auxiliary Department of New Jersey. American Veterans and Vets. Americans of Polish Descent Culture Society. Association of the U.S. Army Delaware Chapter. Delaware Veterans Incorporated. Delaware Freemason Masonic Riders. Delaware Military Academy. Delaware Military Heritage and Education Foundation Incorporation. Delaware National Guard. Delaware Patriot Guard. Delaware River Bay and Authority. Delaware Society, Daughters of the American Revolution. Delaware Society, Sons of the American Revelation. Delaware Veterans Incorporated. Desert Knights of American Motorcycle Club. Lydia York, State Auditor. Department of Veterans Affairs Medical Center. <coughs> Disabled American Veterans and Auxiliary Department of Delaware. Dover Air Force Base. First First State Military Academy, First State Military Women Warriors, Fleet Reserve Association, 
Heroes Welcome. Jewish War Veterans, Department of Delaware. Kazmakai Survivors Association. Korean Defense Veterans Association. Korean War Veterans Association. Marine Corps League and Auxiliary Department of Delaware. Marine Corps League and Auxiliary Department of New Jersey. Military Officers Association of America. Military Order of the Cootie and Auxiliary Grand of Delaware. Military Order of the Cootie and Auxiliary Grand of New Jersey. Military Order of the Devil Dogs Pack of Delaware. Military Order of the Purple Heart. Military Order of the World Wars. National Association of Black Veterans, Delaware Chapter. Paralyzed Veterans of America, Colonial Chapter. Pilgrim Baptist Church Veterans Ministry. Purple Heart Riders. Scottish American Military Society, the first state camp. Solid Service Motorcycle Club. Sons of Union Veterans of the Civil War. The Reserve Officers Association of Delaware. The U.S. War Dogs Association, Incorporated. United States Department of Housing and Urban Development. United States Air Force. United States Army. United States Marine Corps. United States Navy with Navy Operations and Support Center. United States Coast Guard. United States Navy Cruiser Sailors Association. United States Submarine Veterans Incorporated. Veterans of Foreign Wars and Auxiliary Department of Delaware. Veterans of Foreign Wars and Auxiliary Department of New Jersey. Vietnam Veterans of America, Delaware. Vietnam Veterans Motorcycle Club. <coughs> Warrant Officers Association, First State Chapter. Blue Hen Veterans. If your organization was not called and you wish to honor our veterans, please stand and salute at this time. 
I now turn it back over to the chair, Valerie Harwood. Thank you, Nolan. You did a great job. Acting Director Miranda Mao, would you please come forward to provide closing remarks? Good morning, technically still. Uh, the recurring theme you've heard today is about telling stories. There's a few reasons that we should do this. One is to be deliberate and methodical about who we're honoring. That's how we keep their names alive. That's how we keep them with us. Um, the reason that we do this on May 30th is so that flowers are in bloom all across the country, even where it's cold and snowy. That's the kind of methodical preparation that went into making this holiday for us. Holiday is a funny word for it, right? Because it sounds like it should be a good thing. Another reason is that we have folks from older generations who served who never have talked about it. And part of the result of that is that we're invisible when we take the uniform off. Many of us are really humble. Like, how many actually really shot their hand up when they asked who served? None of us, right? Like, it was kind of timid. We take the uniform off, and we go back to regular life, and sometimes we pretend it never happened. And so the only stories that speak for us are huge citations of bravery and movies and trauma. And that is what people think when they think of the military. Some of our kids don't want to serve anymore. Fewer and fewer of us have worn the uniform. This is an interesting time for veterans. With the PACT Act, there have never been so many benefits and covered conditions for us. But those didn't happen by accident, and those didn't happen by being silent about it. We had to communicate what our needs were and what was happening with us. We have so many stories. And when we stop telling the sad ones about the people who are gone, we stop telling the great ones about the people who are gone. I don't know about you, but the people I've lost, it's a lot easier to see them when I close my eyes laughing than it is in any serious moment. So tell the good stories, because it's how we keep them with us. And it's how we work on our healing to move past it. We talked a lot about women veterans today. This is the first time as a state we've come to recognize women veterans. In two weeks is um, Women Veterans Recognition Day. It's not a Memorial Day, it's a Recognition Day. And we haven't honored it yet until now as a state. But we should be honoring all of our stories, not just the women's stories. I just happened to be at a conference with Ms. Wilson and, and grabbed her by the arm and said, please, 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 please come speak at our event. And she was nice about it. <laughs> We're also bringing folks later this summer to help record stories with uh, StoryCorps, which is a nonprofit that helps put stories into the Library of Congress for veterans. And I'm hoping that folks will take us up on the offer to look at the yellow ribbons and learn about some of those stories but also to tell your own. You can pick how you want to do it. You can pick who you want to interview or what story you want to tell. But I think it's important for us to tell some of the normal ones about what life was like so people don't just associate us with the worst days of our lives. There's a reason people should want to serve. That's how we pay it forward. So I hope you'll have a great rest of your day. Thank you for coming out here on a, a work day or from your normal regular lives to take time for this. It means a lot to see you here. Um, Representative Shakocha, before I'm done, sends his regrets. Um, he was supposed to give remarks today, but was needed in joint finance to argue for us. Uh, so that's where he is. And I'm hoping we can get him to record his remarks and put them out on social media later. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Ms. Mao.
At this time, Chaplain Andrew Warner will come forward for the memorial prayer. Please rise for the benediction and remain standing as Sergeant First Class Mary Kate Hall leads us in singing God Bless America. Almighty, as we go forth with our daily life, let us not forget those that have served and given their all. May we be grateful nation and be thankful for their selfless actions and dedication. May we honor them in how we live. May we use our freedoms for the betterment of all and not just for ourselves. With our freedom, may we create community for all and celebrate the gift of life which you have given. May you give our fallen heroes peace. Amen. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with foam. Thank you, Sergeant First Class Hall. Let's give her a round of applause. That was really great. Please remain standing for the honor volley and playing of taps. Honor guard post. 